What is the way forward with the Palestinians? I mean, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with a two-state solution, uh, but I, I want civil rights, human rights for the Palestinians. I just, do you agree with Netanyahu's basic approach? And, and how do we get to a peace, a peaceful situation, if not a peace treaty with the Palestinians? Is the Palestinian Authority actually using part of their budget to fund people who kill Israeli Jews? Well, the answer is yes. And we're here to talk with Congressman Doug Lamborn on the House Armed Services Committee, who's also the chair of the Israel Allies Caucus here in Congress, about the legislation that he passed to stop the UN, United States from doing, giving a single dollar or dime penny to the Palestinian Authority uh, if they're going to keep doing that. And I wanted you to hear from him directly why he called this legislation the Taylor Force Act. This is Joel Rosenberg in Washington, in, on Capitol Hill, uh, with a YouTube exclusive. Congressman Doug Lamborn, you have been a great friend of Israel. You've been a great leader in Congress, especially on the House, House Armed Services Committee. You've been super uh, supportive of um, missile defense, rock, you know, uh, uh, arms for Israel and for our other allies, and as well yes. as missile defense for America. But, as I mentioned on this week's show, uh, there's a piece of legislation that's really going to become one of your defining uh, legacies as you wrap up this 18-year career. We don't really want you to leave, but we understand you have a family you'd love to spend a little more time with then. So who was Taylor Force, and how did his murder lead you down a path of creating the Taylor Force Act, and what is that act? Great questions, Joel. Taylor Force was an American who had served multiple combat tours overseas. After his military career, he was in school and was studying abroad in Israel, or at least was in Israel at the time of an unfortunate mm -hmm. terrorist attack where among other people getting injured, he was stabbed and died at the hands of a terrorist who thought he was going after Israelis. So in his honor, we introduced a bill. Lindsey Graham was the Senate sponsor. I introduced it and it started in the House and it became law under President Trump's signature later on. And the Taylor Force Act said that the Palestinian Authority cannot any longer use taxpayer dollars from the U.S. to fund and reward terrorism. And they were doing that by sending money to terrorists who had committed crimes and were in Israeli jails and prisons, or if they had died during the police action against that terrorist attack to their surviving family. And this is to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars a year. It was a huge so, 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 part of their budget. Clear, so a huge the, part of I their budget. I don't think most Americans really understand that part of the Palestinian Authority budget is to, f is to essentially reward, if you, as a Palestinian, kill an Israeli Jew, and you get arrested for it, you get money every month. You get a stipend. Or your, or your family does, actually. Yeah. And if you get killed as a martyr, as a shaheed, they would say, uh, in, the, in trying to kill Israeli mm -hmm. Jews, your family gets money. And either way you slice it, you are not only considered a hero, you're actually financially rewarded for, for committing terrorism, to, for killing Jewish people. That, that's an insane concept. But this is in the actual budget, and it still is, right? In it the still Palestinian is. Authority budget. We passed the law, and they brazenly have continued this practice and said they're not going to back down. Now, remember that the mismanagement of the Palestinian Authority over Gaza means that there's a crummy economy. People barely... Well, the PA, of course, they were mismanaging it before. Then they yeah. got voted out and, yeah. and, and murdered, and, and so they, they had to leave Gaza, right? And Hamas took over, but you're right. Yeah, and Hamas the basically... Well. Yeah, you're, you're right. Hamas basically took over. Yeah. And, uh, it's a, but either way, it's a crummy economy, and uh, whether it's the so-called West Bank or right. whether it's Gaza, right. and so you make more money doing this pay-to-slay than you would with most other jobs that are available to you. So... Uh, what year was it that it, it actually passed and got signed by President Trump? In 2018. 2018. So by 2021, January 2021, uh, Trump was no longer in power. Has the Biden-Harris administration uh, enforced this uh, to 
with, withhold money uh, from the Palestinian Authority? There is money going to the Palestinian Authority. It is called humanitarian aid. Okay. And there was a narrow exception in the legislation because we didn't want to be accused of withholding life-saving medicine, for instance. Okay. But the Biden administration hasn't really put pressure on the Palestinian because Authority. Because Trump and Pence really were. They, they, not, not only did they, you know, I said sort of armed with your legislation, but the, Trump was getting angry at the Palestinian Authority for for resisting even negotiations on his, you know, just deal of the century uh, plan of, of, of just sort of snubbing uh, the Trump team. And, and so Trump got, you know, started cutting, you know, shutting down the PLO office in Washington yes. and cutting off various types of aid. But that seems to have changed somewhat under the Biden administration. Didn't they start to provide some more funding? Yeah, they, they, they provided more. They didn't crack down like Trump did. They were more lenient and uh, the result is, but, but the PA was brazen to start with, and they just continued in that, and they said, we're going to continue these payments. And so I've introduced follow-on legislation, uh, which we're still working on, okay. but it would go after the financial institutions, okay. the banks that facilitate mm -hmm. these kinds of payments and remove them from the international system okay. that the U.S. is involved in and helps run if they continue that. So. If the PA doesn't act, we want to go after the financial institutions that enable the PA to do this. Let's say <clears throat> former President Trump wins re-election. You won't be in Congress at that point. You've decided not to run again, uh, although your seat is, you feel like is in good hands with the candidate who's running. But what do you, uh, how do you think uh, President, uh, a, a renewed President Trump, a Trump administration, Trump Vance administration will handle the Palestinian Authority, because uh, just in recent days, Trump released a, 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 the photo of, a, of some correspondence between him and Mahmoud Abbas, the uh, uh, the president of the Palestinian Authority. Abbas sent him Trump some letters saying, "I really feel badly. People tried to kill you. This is terrible." And and Trump's like, "Thank you. You know, let's let's try to work to, for peace." And I just thought that was such an astonishing letter for a man who's paying hundreds of millions of dollars to reward people trying to assassinate and kill other people to send Trump a letter. But, but you can see there's, there's a sense that the Palestinians think, well, maybe Trump's coming back. How can we reposition ourselves? So I don't know, just your, uh, what's your read on um, how Trump would handle the Palestinians in a, uh, in a, in, if, if he gets another term? Well, Joel, he would be a lot more forceful and, and decisive. And he would have hopefully really good people, and I'm sure he would, like Mike Pompeo was as mm -hmm. Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. So when we moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, the Golan Heights were recognized as being part of Israel. Right. Uh, the defunding of the of the Palestinian Authority. Um, these are all the kinds of things that Donald Trump did that Joe Biden wouldn't even consider doing. Right. Right. So, but but they're locked into place and so we have we have those as fade out complays and that's a good thing so i think we would continue to have a strong relationship trying to force the pa to do the right thing netanyahu has for years he's been saying look the right way to make peace with the palestinians is not by making peace with the palestinians first they don't want peace their leadership is incapable they're intransigent they're pay you know they do pay for slay like why are we having this conversation? What we should be doing is working on building Israel's alliances and peace treaties with the outer Arab world. And as more and more of those treaties come to pass, where, people, where Arab countries may not love every single thing we do, they may not agree with everything, but that's normal in the world. But at least we can work together and have trade and commerce and security cooperation. And he said that for years, I remember very famously, right, Trump had just been elected and former Secretary of State John Kerry was speaking at a Brookings Institute uh, event here in Washington. And somebody asked him, hey, do you, what do you think about Netanyahu's view that rather than make peace with the Palestinians first, we should make peace with the outside world? And he said, that is never going to happen. Uh, no, 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 no. He said, Ford knows that Israel could never make peace with the outside Arab world before making peace with the Palestinians. And in fact, just the opposite turned out to be true. Trump and his team proved that they actually could get four 
ironically, four, instead of four no's, they got four yeses from the United Arab Emirates, from Bahrain, from Sudan, and from Morocco. Right. And now, as we talked about on the program, on the Rosenberg Report, you, you feel bullish on the idea that the Saudis may, in fact, be the next country. So what is the way forward with the Palestinians? I mean, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with a two-state solution, uh, but I, I want civil rights, human rights for the Palestinians. I just... Um, so, well, what Benjamin? It's a long and messy com yeah, com yeah. Com question, but I'm basically asking you: Do you agree with Netanyahu's basic approach, and and how do we get to a peace, a peaceful situation, if not a peace treaty, with the Palestinians? Well, I really liked what Benjamin Netanyahu said, and of course, he he and his circle know the situation better than people here in America do. Uh, he said it. To go forward, we have to de-radicalize and demilitarize right. Gaza. And if that can be done, and the world combines to have supporting a new type of leadership that's not corrupt, uh, and of course not radicalized and doesn't want to re, uh, doesn't want to arm and militarize, then then we can have peace. And maybe that's under an international partnership that looks to to enforce this. But he did have a vision for. What, would take, yeah. what it would take to have peace, and I think he happens to be right. I mean, if you continue radicalization, if you continue militarization, those things dictate against having peace. Right. So I think he's absolutely critical that those two things are required. Yeah. And, and maybe some kind of international oversight to make sure this happens. Uh, maybe a carrot and a stick, a carrot being here's some billions of redevelopment dollars because that's going to be needed in the future. Mm -hmm. We all can see that with our own eyes. But you've got to make these reforms before you're, you're given these dollars. Yeah. So, and that's where peace-loving countries in the region and people with Western values like the U.S. and the European Union can come in and, and back that up. Well, let's pray. I, you know, I... I I'm skeptical of whether the Palestinian Authority can reform, certainly with Mahmoud Abbas there. I don't think he yeah. wants a reform. There was a reformer there, Palestinian then finance minister and later prime minister, Salam Fayyad. I had a chance to meet Salam Fayyad a few years ago, and I'm very impressed with him. Um, if he were the leader, he would be making reforms. But, uh, you know, Mahmoud Abbas fired him because he was making reforms. Well, he's, so. he's the kind of more moderate person that we have to have to look for for the future. Yeah, the question is whether the Palestinian people themselves want a moderate reformer That's the question. running them, uh, their lives. So I, I, I'm, I'll just say as we wrap, uh, I'm, well, I also should be a, a man of hope as a man of faith, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not that uh, bullish on uh, the Palestinian Authority reforming in the near future. But out of the trauma of Gaza, you know, maybe that becomes a laboratory for trying to build a re true reformist Palestinian government that maybe with, uh, you know, Arab money and U.S. guidance, maybe could create something. I'll give you the last word. Well, it, create, create something healthy that becomes yeah. a model for the PA to follow rather than the PA taking over Gaza and making it just as corrupt as uh, the PA is well, itself. Well, there are problems inherent in this proposal, but I don't really see a lot of other viable options. So, so that seems to be the best shot at having peace. And of course, that's what everyone wants. Yeah. And you have to be working for it, even if it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. You have to at least make the attempt to the best of your abilities. And I think people are going to insist that Israel do, does that. Uh, and I think Israel wants to do that. And they want peace with their neighbors. And so I don't see a lot of alternatives. Yeah. So yeah. let's... Uh, until something else comes along even better, let's, per let's pursue that. Thank you, uh, Congressman Lamborn. And I, I, th I think the Taylor Force Act is, puts, puts a spotlight mm -hmm. on one of the, the biggest problems inside the Palestinian Authority. Because the corruption is bad, but I don't think that's the main problem. The main problem is they still are funding, encouraging, rewarding any Palestinian that kills Israelis. And they and glorify uh, killed uh, uh, so-called martyrs with the street names and yeah. other and Schools holidays being named and holidays and things and, and the radicalization within their school yeah. curriculum is horrible yeah. as well. It seems like the, the the total defunding of that effort 
the pay to slay move inside the PA would be one of the first evidences to me that something yes. was yes. really possible. Yes. I mean, then yes. there's curriculum in the schools and of course there's the media, but this is unconscionable and uh, I'm grateful for how you have um, defended American interests as well as American people. Taylor Force being uh, somebody, an American who, who, who died at the hands of That's Palestinian right. murderers and then those murderers have been rewarded every day since and it's just uh it's just well, joe this is a way of taking his tragic death and turning it yeah. into something good yeah well may your tribe increase thank yes. you so much for uh okay. not only for standing for the united states interest and blessing israel but actually trying to send a message to the palestinians this is not civilized behavior mm -hmm. rewarding this type of pay to slay stuff is just not right you get stop doing it that's a good signal it's a tough signal mm -hmm. for them but should it be so hard that a government shouldn't have a budget to fund uh martyrs when i was talking this morning with the ambassador from the uae yeah. to the to america Yusuf Artaiba, a good guy yeah he, he he's uh, he's enlightened i i like what he has to yeah. say he says that there are some countries like his that are looking to the future you know saudi arabia would be another there are others that are sort of caught in the present and not really making progress and there are others that want to go into the past. Yes. <laughs> and we know who they are. Yes, yes. Uh, I just talked to him last week, and I'm, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a good man. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube exclusive. Please share a link uh, to this uh, show and, of course, to other shows that we've done on the Rosenberg Report with your friends and family on social media. Again, here at RosenbergReport.tv or, of course, on this YouTube channel that you're already subscribed to. If you're not subscribed, then don't just watch this, but subscribe as well. From Washington, from Capitol Hill, this is Joel Rosenberg. Thank you so much for watching.